for match number one. Let's get All down right. to the action. Hello and welcome. It is time for week three of the Vintage Super League. Luis Scott Vargas hasn't lost yet this season. David Ochoa hasn't lost yet this season. But one of these workshop strategies is going to come out on top over the course of the next little bit here. What do you think of these opening hands, Rich? Wow. I mean, if you're playing the workshop mirror, you want to have a lot of mana. And you want to have ways to attack the other guy's mana base. They both have two wastelands or two strip-ish effects in their opening hand. Sure. So... I think that they're both pretty reasonable looking. LSV's hand doesn't go anywhere, though. Yeah. So You keep five lands, though, in this matchup, don't you? I think so. I think I think so. I the, think so, too. I mean, we'll find out. It looks like Webb is on the play, for whatever that's worth. Webb, Webb's hand is certainly a keeper. Yeah. Yeah, he's got he the had, creatures. He, can, he leads with Ancient Tomb. And gets a Ravager out, and then he's going to be able to keep deploying creatures, dealing with LSV's Moxin by using his Revokers, and then wasting LSV's land. <laughs> he leaves Workshop instead of Ancient Tomb. So, the reason I wouldn't leave with Workshop there is because it's such great Wasteland bait. Yeah, I mean, it is, but at the same time, two damage is going to add up over time. Hmm. I mean, I think may, I think that he made a choice there. Like, Dave, Webb doesn't do things like this on accident. He definitely f knew about the possibility of Wasteland and just chose that uh, he'd rather have two life. Yeah. Oh. That's reasonable. I don't know if the life's as important against LSV's deck as opposed to a more aggressive build. But this is, this is actually playing out really nicely for Webb. He's going to be able to start revoking Moxon now. Yep. Um... Next turn, he can revoke whichever mox he doesn't name, waste whichever land LSV plays. This is looking pretty crummy for LSV. But, uh, on, on the other hand, LSV can also use Tangle Wire to buy himself a bit of time. And there are a lot of cards in LSV's deck that would be really powerful here. Now, strip the Ancient Tomb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's committed to this plan. He stripped a Workshop. He stripped oh. an Ancient Tomb. Oof. David's not going to run out of no, mana, though. Troa just draws a workshop. This is this is working out really well for Dave. Um, LSV's strategy here is to grind Ochoa out of mana, but both of the players had a very mana-intense starting hand. So I, I think this is a scenario where if LSV were playing with Gitaxian Probe, he would have been playing this game very differently. But, um, you know, given the limitations of what he's playing, he's taking a line here that's just not going to line up well with what Webb actually has. Yeah, and those Moxes have just done actual zero for Luis. I don't think they can do anything. Well, I mean, now they've been shut off, but I mean, he never even got to tap them for mana when he played them. That's true. That's true. The reason you play them early here is that both players still have all of their Spheres of Resistance and Thorns of Amethyst and even a Chalice, Chalice. and Zero and a Trinisphere in their deck, so you want to get them down now because you might not be able to later. But... It just looks like LSV's deck has aligned really poorly with what Webb is doing. It's so crazy to me how good Frexian Revoker is. I mean, it, oh, I yeah. feel like I should be used to it by now because he just stays good. He's been good in this archetype for years now. But, I mean, the 2-1 creature is super relevant in Vintage. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it effectively functions. It's as good as a Wasteland and a 2-1 body here, right? Turning oh, off those boxes. I mean, in, in Legacy... Thalia is a is a format defining card in a lot of ways. There's the whole death and taxes archetype built around her, and Phyrexian Revoker is often a one sided Thalia that sometimes is cast for two thirds of a mana when you have a workshop. And, and it's not even a legend, right? You get to run out. Not even a legend, no. Yeah, Phyrexian Revoker yeah. did serious work that game. Just the fact so, that there was a clock meant Luis didn't have time to draw into anything. Now they get all the spheres out of their decks, right? All these spheres are leaving. Um, both decks have a bunch of cards that are designed to make spells cost more. And the idea is that because they're playing with Mishra's Workshops and Ancient Tombs, that's pretty one-sided. Their opponents will have a lighter mana base. However, 
in the mirror match where both players have this very very robust workshop based mana base that goes out the window and you don't really want those cards after sideboard what do they have to bring in though well oh. um crucible of worlds any sort of spot removal is usually good it looks like web is thinking about if he wants dismembers or not okay in the workshop aggro mirror they're fantastic Against LSV's deck, uh, they're less good because LSV only has mm. seven creatures, excluding Phyrexian Metamorph. So he went Relic of Progenitus. Is that just for the, the cantrip, the ability to sort of burn through oh, his it, deck? Oh, it also shuts down Crucible. Oh, of course. And sure. Wow. That's tech. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's That's... I don't actually like Graft Digger's Cage in the sideboard for Ravager Shops. I like Relic and Tormod's Crypt, and I like the Relics in the Mirror Match. Got it. And if your opponent's on Smokestack, having more cheap permanents is increasingly reasonable. Sure. I think Luis had a plan. Not that Luis ever goes deep into the tank, but... <laughs> he's, a, he's a relatively speedy player. Indeed. Ochoa Ocho still has his Tangle Wires, which is a little bit interesting to me. I'm pretty sure I saw Luis take his out. Where are you on Tangle Wire in this matchup? Um, I think that Ochoa's are better than LSV's because mm. Ochoa has more threats to deploy and more... He's just trying to create pressure and stop LSV's deck from being able to function. If both decks are fully functioning, LSV will win this because part of LSV's functioning is getting out that Bridge Crucible lock. So in a lot of ways... Webb wants to keep things going in the early stages so that they're so that LSV is less able to assemble his contraption. Makes sense to me. All right, game two. Luis on the play. Let's see what happens. All right. Wow, LSV has a great opener here. Turn one, Jeez. he can get out a crucible, wow. followed by a turn two smokestack. He's got and wasteland crucible too, by the way. Wasteland Crucible, yes, yes. Wasteland Crucible, and he's got everything. I think you what play Crucible in the first turn and because you want to make sure that it gets out there. That seems like the most empower most powerful card in this matchup to me. Does I mean, Webb maybe, have six cards in his hand now? Uh, I think he's got a Sphere on the left edge. He left no Sphere in? That's interesting. I would not have left Sphere in. Um, I also don't like Chalice here, but I don't think you can keep that hand. I don't think, or at least if he keeps this hand, he's probably going to lose. Well, versus what Luis is holding, most of his hands lose, don't they? That's true. That's true. I think I think with Webb's deck, you just want to get a, a threat out on turn one, and I don't think Sphere of Resistance counts as a threat. In the Workshop Mirror, lock pieces are so much better before your opponents had a turn because of what they do to Moxon. Once LSV has had a turn to play all of his Moxon out, play his Mana Crypt, get a Crucible on the table, then Sphere of Resistance uh, doesn't look as good anymore. Fair. And it looks like... Well, web it kept. looks like web kept. Yeah, this is an easy Crucible. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess he's going to slow, slow roll the Revoker. He can go mm -hmm. Mana Crypt Revoker, but he doesn't want to name Blind. He wants to see what... Right. You know, Mox Emerald, Black Lotus, he wants to see what Web's going to play. Absolutely. So this is pretty awkward for Webb. He just drew strip mine, and if that crucible had been something that wasn't crucible, then strip mining the opponent's workshop is a great play. Yep, but no brainer. Thanks to crucible, um, that's just not a very exciting play anymore. So, do you, what do you do here if you're Webb? You throw out your cards and hope that you'll draw something good next turn. But what's his plan with Chalice? I don't know. I would not I mean, have he could, Chalice in after boarding here. He can Chalice for as many as three if he wants to, but the Crucible's already down. Crucible's already down. Um, he can't Chalice two with his deck, right? And if he's brought in Relic of Progenitus, he certainly doesn't want to go around casting Chalice at one. Looks like Chalice three. Is he that afraid of... Uh, is that Chalice at three? That yeah. is. It's an Insaring Bridge answer. But LSV can now win the game without casting a single spell. Mistress Factories. Crucibles. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and he's also going to revoke her the uh, Mox Emerald, smokestack. I would think. Ooh, interesting. Smokestack? <laughs> Chalice 3, not going to last very long. So, Smokestack on the surface, oh, that, that is normally a very good draw here, but it's not going to be able to pull him out of this because... So, Smokestack is an amazing magic card from Urza's Saga, the people that brought you Time Spiral and Yawgmoth's Will. On the surface of it, it looks symmetric, right? Each player sacrifices an artifact or a creature or a land during his or her upkeep. But it turns out that you can put... You start with no soot counters on it, and you sacrifice permanents based on the number of soot counters. You go to your turn, and you stack the triggers such that you first sacrifice zero permanents. Then you increment the number of soot counters to one. So your opponent sacrifices one. And then on your turn, you sacrifice one. And if you want to, you can go up to two soot counters. And but Luis what's really is interesting... Of, is, Luis is a fan of the one soot counter, though, especially when he's got a Crucible lock. Like yes. He can effectively play a land via Crucible every turn and just keep up Smokestack for one literally forever. Right. So it's interesting about both of these decks is that every single draw is a permanent. So you're always going to be able to keep permanents on the board. But that... Crucible from LSV is yep. going to be able to ensure that he's just up on permanence. It's providing him with his favorite thing, a lot of value. <laughs> um, and next turn, it's going to get even worse for Webb because LSV is going to be able to throw down that tangle wire. And um, Well, not until Chalice gets sacrificed. Oh, that's true. That's true. Wow, two Ravagers into this Revoker naming Ravager. Mm -hmm. That's rough. It well, is rough. Revokers don't become non-functional. They just become arc-bound workers. Yeah, and Luis has to decide whether he wants to block. Mm. Now there's a Ravager that actually does have full functionality. I think that block makes sense, though. Like well, he, just, he wants just wants to just cut down the number of permanents, right? Yeah, he wants to grind this game down with that smokestack. And we'll see if he pushes it to two. I bet he stays on one. Yeah, lose the Mana Crypt. That way you don't, you're don't you not in any danger of losing the game mm. to random Mana Crypt flips. This also lets him keep Wastelanding Webb's lands. He stays at one. He draws Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Um, Urborg does a lot of really neat things in this deck because it lets your, your Ancient Tombs tap for mana without dealing you damage, and it lets going to the Bazaar of Baghdad net you mana, and it lets your um, Tabernacle tap for mana. It just does a lot of really cool things in this deck. Yeah. So, strip mine here is actually going to be, uh, huh? I guess I'm a little surprised that Webb didn't strip mine there, since if he strip mines, LSV is going to either lose his ensnaring bridge, or sorry, his uh, the stack or the crucible or smokestack. It's a good point. So, I actually would have liked to strip mine there. I think his plan is to try to force the smokestack to eventually to eat the crucible. Hmm. But he could have yeah, forced you. He right. one he of them to go to the graveyard. And I think if LSV loses either of these components, he's just in not very good shape. As it stands, as it stands now, that? LSV is going to be just fine because he's going to be able to get down a, a tangle wire next turn. But if if Webb had stripped the workshop then LSV's in uh, quite a bad spot. Well, he, lose, he lets the smokestack go, and he's still got Crucible with Crucible Wasteland Lock a, and a handful of four cards to nothing. Like, Webb's got, what, a Ravager and an Emerald in that world? Uh, yeah, I mean, he can at least try to race LSV. Yeah, I, okay. I guess I do agree with you, but I mean, I can also see why David played it this way. Mm. He's trying to keep the Ravager alive. Hypothetically hoping that he can deal 15 or force Luis to ramp up the smokestack, which will then eat Luis's board. Mm. Well, this is, this is Tangle Wire doing some really powerful things. Yeah. yeah. At this point, I don't know how Webb gets out of it. Uh, Tap Strip Mine is likely to get wastelanded here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure LSV has this. been an interesting demonstration. We talk about the power of Crucible of Worlds, especially in combination with Smokestack, but we hadn't actually seen it. This oh, yeah. This is just textbook. And it's going to be 
if if this game were to go on, which I'm not sure it will, but if it were, um, then you'd get to see more synergy with Bazaar of Baghdad. <laughs> that uh, land in the graveyard is just as good as a land in hand, so you can easily just pitch your lands and collect business spells. So, the Uba Mask deck is not all that great at closing out games. It has <laughs> four Lodestone Golems, three Revokers, two Mishra's Factories, and sometimes a Phyrexian Metamorph. It usually, this is actually often how it closes out games by just. The opponent has no permanence. Right. Eventually, the opponent gets bored. Exactly. I mean, if you, if you were to add a, like a Trinosphere into this mix, the game would essentially be over unless. Web were playing spirit guys or some kind. Yeah, There's but the lodestone golem. Right on time, right on cue. Here's lodestone golem, just in case. Smokestack hanging out on one soot counter, even though Web has no permanence, <laughs> and Web scoops him up. All right, there you go. On to game yeah. three. This has been a really fun match. We've gotten to see both decks do exactly what they're designed to do. Yeah, pretty much. Game one, Webb just came out swinging and threw a bunch of robots at LSV. Game two, LSV just collapsed Webb's board. So you played both. You've played both of these decks relatively recently. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. Which do you prefer? Which do you think is the better vintage deck right now? I, I actually think that the Workshop Agro deck, the Ravager Shops, is the better vintage deck right now. Okay. It has it has a lot of reach with those Triskelions. And it can get through a lot of damage in unexpected ways, and it's just faster. Um, that said, I think that there are certain holes in what it can do. It's not great against Oath. Um, it's it's pretty soft to Nalrod. And LSV's Ubisvac stack is able to both capitalize on some of its weaknesses... And has like I, I'd rather play LSV's deck against a deck with Gristlebrand. Okay. Sounds like a lot of the case for Uba stacks is it's cooler. It is absolutely cooler. Yes. So Counts. Uba Mask is a deck that really goes back a long ways. People have been playing Bazaar Baghdad and Uba Mask and often Goblin Welder together for a very long time. Um, and Gollenwald is a great addition to the deck if you can play any colored cards at all, because if your opponent draws something scary off Uba Mask and you weld it out with your Goblin Welder, then your opponent just can't cast anything that turn. Right. Because the card's gone, and <laughs> what was granting the ability of that card to be cast is also gone. So, so you, you weld away the Uba Mask during your opponent's draw step after they draw the card, but before they can play it. Yes, yes. That's me, Rich Shane. From... <laughs> it's not very nice. It's, it's not, actually a hard block, though. It's pretty pretty crazy. So, Move a Mask is very cool and very fun. And let's see how, let's see how these hands look, because both the games so far, whichever player had the better starting hand won. And LSV it's has, a, has an Allrod in starting hand. Only a workshop, though. He's pretty vulnerable to wasteland strip mine effects. But Webb doesn't have one. Do you keep that draw if you're Luis? You have to, right? I think so. I think you I think you have to keep that. I mean, slamming down that turn one null rod is going to shut off a huge part of Webb's game plan. Um, it's got to be scary, though. It is. It is. Oh, looks like LSV did not deign to keep that hand. And it looks like instead he has... Whoa! Whoa! All the way down to five. So, I... didn't I, get a good look at the six-card hand, but it had another Null Rod in it. His six-card hand had Mox Jet, Null Rod, Dismember. So he could have revoked yeah, kind of a whatever Web played on... He could have dismembered whatever Web played on turn one, and then played Null Rod. So I actually would have... I don't know. I would have kept the seven, and I would have kept the six. I think uh, he's looking... Is he looking for Crucible? I mean, we've talked about how key of a card that is in this matchup. I guess Maybe he that he was digging for Crucibles. So, it's worth noting that this game, Webb did what we were talking about 
last game and opened with City of Trader or Ancient Tomb instead of Mishra's Workshop, which yep. is actually going to pay big dividends to him. Yeah, got his Ancient Tomb stripped, and now the Workshop will survive. Right. That's, that that's Chalice cool. Zero is pretty scary, too. I mean, that's that's what you want to do, right? Chalice Zero yes. on play. Absolutely. Happens to have caught Luis without any Moxin in his hand, but six card hand at Moxin. Yeah, I mean, Webb has to feel good about where he is. He has cards on the table. Um, for all you know, LSV could be holding five Moxes at this point, uncastable. Right. So at this point, there's no reason not to play that uh, Revoker, right? He doesn't know what to name. He might prefer a Sphere versus an opponent with nothing. Hmm. I guess the only thing you're worried about, though, is Sol Ring, right? Well, he's already revoked Sol Ring. Oh, okay. So I guess I guess there's nothing left to revoke. I can't actually see that from here. So LSV opts not to clone anything with his Phyrexia Metamorph. It's four mana, right? Oh, that's right. That's the sphere in play. Okay. Now Revoker. Okay. I have no idea what you name here. What is it? What is it? Sol you name Sol Ring again? Right. That's, that's funny. That's reasonable. Oh, and there's All a Crucible. All right. Crucible Strip Mine okay. has been assembled. But what hasn't been assembled yet is Spine of Ishtar. <laughs> so now the game's become pretty interesting. So I guess Webb still can't cast his Golem. But he can cast Tanglewire and buy a lot of time here. Well, if he misses a land drop and plays Tanglewire, though, that seems like an easy strip on Workshop. Mm. And then uh, Webb's going to be kind of hoisted on his own petard with that Sphere. So do you play the Ravager so that you can get rid of your Spear if it becomes unpleasant? I mean, I guess you're missing a land drop in all worlds. So Luis is going to know how good the, his strip mine crucible is. Mm. Luis really, need, if Luis finds a mistress factory that he can block and then bring back with crucible, he's in great shape. I mean, as it is, yeah. he's got. I mean, there's a clock. There's a three turn clock with those stupid revokers. It's a little <laughs> two ones. They do everything. They do. They're really good. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, this tangle wire does make a lot of sense. It cl closes off a ton of mana. Ravager also had to be tempting there, though. Emerald that's uncastable because of the chalice. Yeah, here's the strip mine. LSV is going to be able to... He's not going to hit the workshop. Oh, he's going to wait and see what gets tapped. Oh, that's interesting. But this lets Webb tap the workshop to... The it depends. I guess he doesn't need to, though. Webb can just tap three irrelevant cards. Louise hmm. did not strip the workshop. Well, let's see, now next turn, plus he's going to tap three. So I guess he's going to be able to play... Uba. Does he get the Uba Mask? Not quite, right? Well, he's, no, he, 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 no, because of the sphere. Right. He's clearly... He, LSV played, also opted not to... Okay. Hmm. That's well, he clearly wanted a permanent that he could tap to Tango where He decided that was more important than stripping the workshop, which is defensible. I mean, it did let this Ravager come down. But now what is Luis going to do with his mana? Academy only taps for a one. Emerald gets countered by Chalice. Well, that's interesting. He left the strip mine up. Can he hmm. survive the next turn? Isn't he just dead? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's just yeah. dead. So wow. I guess he should have used the strip mine. That was a really interesting match. He's still in, he's still in trouble. Like, he's still majorly in trouble from the Tango Wire. I was, we were both wondering about the Tango Wire choice from David, but uh, it worked out great. I mean, it essentially yeah. prevented Luis from actually dealing with the Revokers. Yeah. I mean, they're still just, bears. They're, they're still a reasonable clock. And tempo you know, them out. then their good buddy Ravager arrives and uh, essentially turns that four damage into eight. Yeah, a lot of that game swung on the uh, the mulligan that Luis made, right? On the draw with only one land. 
Mm. And I, I that is super risky. Like, I, I would it's hard to know what you would do there. I, I I'm not. I don't. I don't mulligan often enough. So I. <laughs> I don't know. I would have kept his seven and his six, but I'm not saying that's correct. Right. I'm just saying that. I don't know. What this means is that David Ochoa still hasn't lost. Mm-hmm. He he ran the table in the play-in tournament. He lost <laughs> what, like week one of the play-in tournament or something? Yeah, he lost early and then decided that he was just going to give up losing. And right, uh, he just rattled off like five wins in a row. I think it was to win the play-in tournament. Yeah, three more here. He's now in first place, and he's either going to be all by himself, or you're going to join him. If you want to join him, though, you got to beat Efro. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fully expecting him to be fully in first place by the end of the night. So. Crazy. Well, I, welcome to the league, David Ochoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's been I, playing really not- well and uh, absolutely uh-huh. earned his spot here, and he's been showing us why he deserves to be here ever since. All right, well... We saw Ochoa's deck there. Now we get to go watch the uh, slightly w- worse version of it. I mean, Chris Pakula basically took the deck Ochoa won the play-in tournament with, not realizing Ochoa had accidentally left out some of the lock pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Still find that story hilarious. Uh, Pakula's going to be playing against Bob Maher, and we will get Ochoa himself, Mr. First Place, in the booth alongside Eric Froelich. So stay tuned, guys. We will be right back with round number two.